मंगलम श्रीमदातम भुवि गृणंती हुदा जना ओ शांति 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 ओ लॉर्ड योर गॉस्पल इज लाइक नेक्टर एंड ब्लिस सावर्ड अपॉन द पेन स्ट्रिक एंड लाइफ्स ऑफ सफरिंग ह्यूमैनिटी इट डिस्पेल्स ऑल द सीन्स एंड मिसडीड्स ऑफ लाइफ इट ब्रिंग स्पिरिचुअल वेलफेयर इन लाइफ the spiritual beauty and prosperity and grace spreads through and through one who listens to your holy message they are the real givers who preach and pronounce the nectar of your message to the suffering humanity om peace 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 be unto us all <coughs> so we are on reading sri ramakrishna gospel of sri ramakrishna and we are on page 843 sri ramakrishna is talking about two classes of devotees in the whole creation there are two classes of devotees one is of the nature of kitten and another is of the nature of monkey the monkey nature and kitten nature so one tries to vedanto i want to hold on i will do i am atman i am pure i will do by sadhana i will reach the goal and another attitude is the attitude of a kitten kitten always depends on mother and he only says mew 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 where he has all dependent total surrender huh? so you also can take if you like take one there is ekta yanle baba eto koshto kore okay okay so there is nothing is empty then <laughs> ঠিক আছে গোটা বান্ডেল টাইম লাগে কেন কেন রাখা যায় সো देयर আর টু টাইপস অফ ডেভোটিস ওয়ান ইজ ইজ এ ডেভোটি ডেভোটি হু সারেন্ডারস एवरीथिंग টু গড এন্ড গডস উইল এন্ড অ্যানাদার ইজ দ্যাট হু থিংস বেদান্তিক ওয়ে দ্যাট ইজ মাই রেসপন্সিবিলিটি আই এম নট দি বডি মাইন্ড সো দ্যাট ইজ দি অ্যাটিটিউড অফ হোয়াট ইউ কল দি মাঙ্কি monkey holds the baby mother and is baby's responsibility if he falls down and mom jumps monkey jumps from one branch to another branch for food and thing but it is not the responsibility of mother then it comes to the responsibility of the baby to hold on so i will hold on to god eh? that's a good attitude and another is i have no power i tried my best i i am very weak oh god oh lord please help me no this harunagat so these are the two types and there are another class of devotee they have the nature of the young monkey the aspirant of both classes are devotees of god the further you advance the more you will realize that god alone has become everything he alone does everything he alone is the guru he alone is the ishta he alone gives us knowledge and devotion this is a wonderful statement this statement which indicates that it is it is that as in whatever path we follow path of devotion or path of knowledge but if you are sincere in movement is given then what will happen now you will then feel that alone god is the only reality and god is everything what i see it is nothing but god but i don't understand that i see the human personality i see the plants trees and all these material objects but it is only god and god and god alone so the further you advance the more you will realize Uh, realize that 
God alone has become everything. God has become everything. Means it is God only. Uh, yesterday we are reading in the in the Shanti Gita that is a wonderful big, big huge ocean, and in that ocean of blissfulness, waves and ripples all arise, eh? and all the waves and ripples are different. But why not you sit such a way? I can see your face. Yeah, uh, sit this way, that way, moving here or there. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. So, but it is all the waves are nothing but water. Yeah. So this is the philosophy. Whether you know it or not, all the waves, you may name it differently. It is a big wave, uh, tsunami wave, every wave they give the new name, no? So these waves may be named differently, but can you find anything but water there? That means you are seeing the ocean water only in this form. So you are seeing the ocean of consciousness, God, the divine, the absolute, only in different shape and size. It will That will come into our awareness, Ramakrishna said, as you advance more and more towards God. So spirituality should be focused here. What is spirituality? It is not... As Swami Vivekananda says, that it is doctrines or dogmas or rituals and forms, temples and churches. Eh? I do uh, ritual like prostrating, some the kneeling down. Eh? Christians are kneeling down, Hindus are prostrating, Hindus are lying flat in the mm, like that. Matters little. You are showing your devotion to God. That is the point. And are you really becoming spiritual? What is the sign of spirituality? Spirituality. As Holy Mother said, Sarada Devi, that you will not grow to horns so that we can understand from a distance, oh, you are a holy man because your horn is growing here. But no, Holy Mother said, you grow in your consciousness of the divine, gyan, chaitanya, knowledge and devotion. You grow that side. So here is the point that what will be the sign? This very important thing with Ramakrishna is giving a glimpse of it. You are all spiritual seekers, you are all devotees of God, whether maybe Vedantic attitude or maybe devotional attitude or maybe meditative attitude matters little. Are you feeling this way? That whatever I am seeing is God's will. Everything is moving by God's will. Everything is pulsating in the consciousness of the divine. This feeling will come, she says. The farther you advance, the more you will realize that God alone has become everything. He alone does everything. We think, I am doing, you are doing, he is good, he is bad. In our ignorant mind we see, you know. But everything is done by the divine and what we call so-called bad and so-called good, it is uh, all his play, his drama. Uh, it's very difficult to understand. Evil people are also his uh, play, and good people are being uh, tortured by the evil, no? It's very difficult to understand. But we can understand even on a human level. Suppose a mom has five kids, of the five kids, one is very calm and serene and soft and sweet, no? Another is poking all the time, punching, <laughs> creating the trouble for all. Do you not find in the family like that? The same mom, dad, eh? but to the mom, they're my child. Both good or bad, so-called. In the eye, eyes of the mother, they're all children and her children. So, she does not take offense of that. She may scold sometimes, hey, don't do that. Eh? She have to sometimes come in rescue for the good child, like Mother Kali, sword in an hey. Mm. <laughs> and naturally, his head is chopped out. <laughs> By chopped out means the significance is the head is chopped out, but you see the impact, Mother keeping the garland as garland in his chest, in her chest, my own child. I have destroyed the evil nature. 
but I'm holding in me. So here are the beautiful analysis how we can view the entire world in a different perspective. Uh, that it is from our perspective very difficult. We can see at least God in some good things, no? But to see in the bad, God's presence is a higher level. You have to go to the mother's heart, that, that pure love. So, but as we progress in spirituality, Sri Ramakrishna says the growth will be inevitable, inevitable, and that will be feeling that God alone has become everything, and He alone is doing everything. Every action is done by Him only. I think I am doing, you are doing. Uh, that, that song, Ram Prasad song. Sakuli uh, tomari icha. Sakuli, everything is your will, O oh Mother. And tomar karma, your work. Tumi karma, O oh you are doing your own work. Loke bale, the public, the ordinary people like us, they declare, Kori ami, I am doing this. I have accomplished this in my life. I got the PhD. I got this job. I drove that evil from this society. I will go and bomb the country. We all are lookable equilibrium. But it is what is the play? It is all the play of the one God in different name and form. He alone is the guru. Even God is the guru. That's why we say, who you see, uh, Every being, if, he, if it is God, why not Guru God? So in Guru, there is nothing but Satchidananda. So in everything we see around, it is made of Satchidananda name and form is only difference. He alone is the Ishta. We meditate on Ishta. What is our Ishta? Someone is Mahakali, someone is Rama, someone is Christ, someone is Buddha. Eh? So whatever your Ishta, that is also that consciousness, that Satchidananda. So, right from microscopic level to the big micro and uh, to macro, and right from the most unwanted evil to the most exalted good, it is only Satchidananda playing. Uh, waves, maybe sweet wave, uh, rough wave, both are waves. Some sweet waves people like, you know, People, the surfers from the whole world come to near Santa Barbara. There is a spot. Uh, you, when you drive, <laughs> is it not? That place is where uh, the name I forget. But it is on your way. The, all the surfers, because these waves are so, so sweet and so, so smooth that you can, you can just play very nicely there. Huh? But there are rough areas. But is it not the same ocean play? One ocean. So it is the one divine entity, and that can be experienced. We are talking only. A person who is really practicing either devotion or knowledge or meditation or nishkama karma, this opening will happen. His heart will be so pure to feel this experience. The further you advance, Ramakrishna says, further you advance, the more you will see there, there are other things even beyond the sandalwood forest, mines of silver and gold and precious gems. Therefore, go forward. Huh? So in spiritual life, never think that you are done, you have achieved the goal, because it is infinite. If it is infinite, there cannot be a limit of the infinite. So as much as you go, you'll see the horizon increases, like our normal experience. Uh, in the five-way, pre, freeway five, and in different freeways, you will find that huge stretch of uh, road going for maybe 10 miles, you can see it is going up and down like that. And you try to hold the horizon. I want to catch the sky. Uh, so you start your journey, but as much as you move, the horizon recedes. 
because it is infinite. So, in spiritual life, never be satisfied with you are sitting one day and you are sleeping, you see a good dream. Ah, I, am, I have great dream and try to uh, have that joy and, okay, have that joy. But it is nothing. One day you are meditating, a flash of light comes. And ah, wonderful. What? I have achieved everything. Don't say so. It is that thing. It is just a beginning. Just a little touch of that infinite. So go on, go on, and go on. And that's why Sri Ramakrishna said that this is the, there is a forest and there is a woodcutter, that story. Woodcutter, he used to cut woods in the forest and there's a poor guy who had to do so much of labor to cut the firewood and carry them and then dry them sometimes and then put into the marketplace and sell and get little earning. One day a holy man said, go forward. But he didn't pay attention. Our gurus give mantra, give something. Oh, okay, take it. And sometimes he said that, Ari, that holy man told me to go forward. My guru told me to do this, this, this. Some people forget the mantra also. <laughs> and afterwards say, I want to re revive the, what I have done. And then you come and come to know that I, I don't, I have forgotten the mantra. How can you forget if you do every day? <laughs> you have to do three times, morning, noon time, and evening. And if you do every day, how can you forget? Tell me. They forgot that and forgot everything. So this is the way we forget and then suddenly some consciousness comes. Huh? I know of one gentleman, he was initiated from Sami Ma uh, Shivananda, our Ramakrishna order, second president, Mahapurush Maharaj. And he was a professor of our, one of our engineering school. And I was connected with that. <coughs> so he then came to me one day and said, Oh, Swami, I have forgotten my Guru Mantra. <laughs> and Mahapurush Maharaj gave you the mantra you forgot. Then I found out that there are some other devotee of Mahapurush Maharaj. So I said, why not you go and talk to that devotee? Uh, he, may, uh, he may say something. And then he went there and he suddenly said, is, uh, is, no, this is the mantra, one, what I chant, because you are initiated, so I can talk to Guru, Guru Bhai, Guru Bhai. And as soon as this, he uttered the mantra, he said, ah, I got it. So this, this woodcutter, after a sudden moment, thought that, oh, the holy man told me to go forward, so why let me try to go forward? And he entered into a deeper area of the forest, and there he found, he said, oh my God, it's a forest of sandalwood. Sandalwood is how price, how much price is the sandalwood versus the firewood? And he started cutting that and became a quite a rich person quickly. And he thought that's okay. But again, another time it clicked. The holy man didn't say that you go up to the sandalwood forest. He said, go forward. Okay, let me go forward. And then Ramakrishna said, he could find the gold mine, silver mine, and all these jewels, etc. That is, Sri Ramakrishna said, in spiritual life, there is no end of that experience. Infinite experience, infinite joy, infinite bliss will be experienced. So don't stop getting little vision, little, little glimpse of light, uh, or having some horripilation one day, or little bit uh, dancing like that. Uh, these are all momentary. These are nothing. And it may spar your energy for a moment and then drops again. So better that's why in our order we don't uh, encourage much of jumping and dancing and howling. That because it, in, it creates one sensation. And that sensation is not stable. We have to be, make it stable by your own spiritual practice. It will be like acclimatizing yourself in an altitude after altitude after altitude so that you can reach the Everest. Huh? So a pinnacle of 
try and then stay. That's why that you can stay in your spiritual experience. Uh, like our great examples of the Ramakrishna disciples, no? uh, Maharaj, Mahapurush Maharaj, Bigyan Maharaj, uh, whoever, they are all exalted, they live in that plateau by practicing, practicing. That's why very important is to practice. But in practice, don't get deluded. Uh, some people say, I see light. I also see light, you know? Now I can see light, see? Yeah, hey, I'm seeing so much. <laughs> and so all this flickering around. So I have a, I'm a realized soul. So no. Those are conditional. Anything you get, even the drug. Drug stimulates the brain, uh, some neurons. And people feel something coming out. <sighs> but that's not yours. You are stimulating by some other odd means. Your meditation will go and it will be stimulated automatically by because of that experience. Experience will give the stimulation. It is versus to stimulate it, you are giving some, um, uh, some medicine which will be negative because you crave for that, crave for that, and you will become a victim of the drug and not getting the joy. I have met many people who come to me and say, I, I don't like drinking. But I cannot give up. I know it is nothing. It is bad. It is destroying me. But I cannot. So you become a victim. So therefore, don't follow that path. Ramakrishna Vedanta teaches us, be pure, be selfless, develop your spirituality, follow your Guru Mantra every day, three times, four times, whole day. Try to see the divine in everyone, what is saying here and make a spiritual growth in yourself spontaneously so that you will feel the joy of spiritual life. And it becomes yours. It cannot be taken away by anyone. But what you are doing, even you go to some holy people, eh? there are maybe earlier days, it was very popular here in this you know, Los Angeles and any other area. You come, you give $1,000, and you can get instant some experience. Okay, even I understand. You give 1,000, you get one in, in, in instant. But it is not yours. You come out, and then you are the same old fool. We do that every day, no? We go to every day with deep sleep. And that's a very most pleasurable place. Eh? But we feel joy there. There is nothing physical, nothing mental. Because you are not neither dreaming, neither seeing the physical world. But you are close proximity of the Satchidananda. But there is a veil of ignorance. That's why we call sleep. Sleep means ignorance. And there, the touch of the joy, what is here? You get a little touch of. Suppose you go and touch the ball. I feel a little heat. But I have not touched the real heat. So there you have to absorb. So by samadhi, by practice of meditation and practice, if one consciously goes into that direction, coming deep into it, and penetrates that veil which was blocking in the sleep time, then you can become a realized soul. Only difference is that we are going and touching that same spiritual reality. But there is being a veil of ignorance, I cannot feel it. Feel for a moment and come back, I become the same old guy. Same anger, same hatred, same meanness, same unkindness, or whatever the man, person was, he goes and comes back, the same old guy. No transformation. But if you go, consciously move, your transformation is happening you will be a divine personality. Your outlook will be different. And you come out, people will say, oh, he's a realized soul. And he's, he can give us peace. And here, they are established in that peace. So, Sri Ramakrishna's guidance is here. Don't make easy spirituality. Ah, people are always trying to make how quickly we can get samadhi. Are get a little meditation, samadhi, forget. Huh? Or we cannot sit for even five minutes. Monkey mind takes us everywhere. And we are samadhi. 
The terminology has come into society so much, people don't understand it. Uh, one gentleman used to come here, and uh, maybe I see maybe once a year now, occasionally. And he, I used to sit there every day for so many people question and this and that. So he came, he one day very seriously come. Oh, I say, have you nirvikal samadhi? I'm like, oh, Baba, what is that? Like, you don't have it? I'm like, no. I'm like, I have it. I'm like, okay, Baba. So you are great. <laughs> he has nirvikal samadhi. What is the nirvikal samadhi? What he thinks about it, nirvikal samadhi? I do not know any idea. But he, maybe little concentration, little something, but it is totally trans. It will, it is sign of spirituality. Is a transformation of character. Your face will be shining differently. You can see. I, I tell you every day that if you want to be a check on your spirituality, you sit for meditation, and after that go and check your face. <laughs> what was the face before, <laughs> and what is the face now? It is more serene, more calm, more peaceful, more joyful. And you, of course, feel here. But uh, even not, at least this little transformation will happen. Angry person's face. Violent person who is going to kill somebody with a gun, you know, look at, look at the face. But it will transform. So beautiful, so calm, serene, in Ah, that I don't understand. They are yogis. They have otherwise, can they plan such big things? Rabano was also jogi, but he utilized it this way and this is the other way. Huh? I, I think that may be the only explanation I have. I do not know if anyone has some other idea. Bin Laden, really so. When I saw the Bin Laden's picture, I thought, oh my God, what a peaceful, serene face. And he is the planner of this big thing. He is having the yogic power, concentration and everything, but he used it for the destruction of this, this thing. And that is used by the positive. That's why um, and a practice should be under such guidance that we don't get derailed. That's why in our Ramakrishna tradition also, we don't encourage much of what you call the uh, miracle. Miracle is not bad, but miracle diverts your attention and then you become miracle mongering. And where is miracle? This all, most of the people run to miracle places. Why? They think that will be, uh, I will be cured this way, I will levitate this way, I will penetrate the wall this way. And what will happen for that? Ramakrishna's example is not that one brother one, one of the family members in a village, the one brother became a monk. And he gave up everything and went on austerity and meditation. Ramakrishna gospel is unique. And then he was doing meditation and prayer. And after only in, uh, that is the monastic rule, that after 12 years of your renunciation of the home, hearth and home, you were wandering monk. But you plan to see your motherland, and a birthplace, yeah. and to touch the ground because that has given you the body and also the mom and death. So this boy, after 12 years of tremendous austere practices, have come back, and his brother, elder brother, <coughs> he was also um, came and said, greeted. And in the, then they, both of them were going to some place, and there was a river. And they were waiting, elder brother was waiting for a boatman, boat to come, ferry boat. But it is delayed and delayed. His brother said, oh, it's nothing. See, I can go, I can cross the river. And he walked all over the waters and went on the other side. And by that time, the boatman came, and he went, brother went on the other side, and they met together again. Then he said, brother, what is your spiritual attainment in these 12 years of your renunciation? What did you achieve? Mm -hmm. Brother proudly said, don't you see? In before you, what I did? Oh, you did what? 
I walked over the water. I don't need any boat. And he, his elder brother was a little intelligent. He said, I pay a penny to cross this river. You 12 years you spend to save this penny. That is your spiritual growth. Understand. It makes miracle to others. And you can get a good flock around you. You may be a Jagat Guru. And you may have website and this and that and beating of the drum, fan club. All will be there. That is the game. But what about spirituality? It has got nothing to do with spirituality. Spirituality is knowing who you are. Spirituality is knowing to getting established in our inner peace and joy, unfailing joy, absolute joy. So this is the point where Ramakrishna is emphasizing here. No? That's why he said, go forward in your spiritual practice, what your teacher has given. Meticulously take that and start practicing and dive deep, repeat the mantra, find the joy. If you do seriously, Raja Maharaj said, if you do, it will happen. If it is not happening, it is your fault. He challenged, if it does not happen, come and slap me. Swami Brahmananda challenging, you slap me on my face if it does not happen. Huh? That means that is the certainty. It will happen. It must have to happen. But why is not happening? Then you have to find the cause of it some other place. Uh, where is the leak? You are pouring, and Ramakrishna gave the example again. And one, there is a um, uh, paddy field, and one farmer had some land, and he was trying to pull the water into this. And putting, putting water, hold his lever, and say that no water has gone there, all drowned, gone in some other place. There are holes. What are the holes through which your all these practices are being not going away. Where? That is, observe your mind, see that it becoming purer, so that it is... And pure mind means what? It will love God. Simple formula. We think, oh, purity, purity. What is the purity? Purity is nothing. Purity is that thing which will be reflected in your life that your love for God will increase more and distaste for other things will also grow simultaneously. As much distaste, so much love. As much love, so much distaste. That is the sign of spirituality. People don't talk about that thing. People think Samadhi, matted lock, uh, all the rings, and what you call tulsi leaf, and this, that, garland. They, I'm not saying they're bad. But their secondary importance, importance, primary importance, is to understand whether we are growing spiritually and really genuinely transforming our character. And whatever happens outside, I feel a little consoled here and peaceful here. I know that these are happening. The world will go on in this way. But this is the inner joy. So and as much as you go, so much distaste will come. That's the important point. Taste for God, distaste for other things. If you say, I have test for God and test for the world, that's wrong. <laughs> ah, if I keep my two feet here, then I can say, I am here. But if you want to put one step this way, you are off from this side one step. You cannot say, I am one step this way, one step that way. You cannot be putting your leg in two boats. Two boats are going in two directions. When it does not move, two boats are side by side, it is okay. But if the boat moves, that it will part. So our attention for God will be more. The Gita, our Narada Bhakti Sutta said, no, that you will be interested in listening to the talks and lectures. Horikatha, wherever there is the glories of God is being spoken, your heart will be seeking for that. Bhajan, uh, Japa, etc. Uh, Tirtha, going to holy places of pilgrimage. Meeting Satsanga, holy company. Uh, those, 
your heart will be seeking for them more and more and more. And this mundane thing of the world will be there because you have to live in the world, but it will have less interest and lesser interest and lesser interest. Then you will not bother about that. Okay, I eat, that's okay. I don't eat, that's okay. God is with me. So that type of, that's where you find the uh, different stories in the, in the um, early uh, monastery ministry, uh, life of the, ma, what you call the devotees. Uh, that, that's a good story, no? That they, there is a Brahmin husband and wife, and the husband is always engrossed in the scriptures, reading scripture, and God, 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 God. And you see, poor lady, she was what she is, a Brahmin, good, but she needs to eat food. And he's, he's in his book and he's marched. Are you, what about the food? And then the wife said that we, we are fasting for two days, we cannot do any, you have to go out. Just go out and bring something. To, we cannot fast, how many days? And then he then came out of his. <laughs> And he was reading the Gita, and there is this word that that bhakta who surrenders unto me, I take care of his all things. What is to be preserved, I preserve for him, and what he needs, I supply. Word, mark the word, I supply. As they just we said, God has become everything. That is God is doing, not you doing, not me doing. So he thought, but he's a devotee. He said, this is not right. How God himself will come to give my needs? He will bring my food eh, and vegetables. He, he will bring it? No, no, no. He will make someone do for his, on his behalf. He is the Lord of the universe, no? He will inspire you and he will bring me. That means acceptable. So he corrected the word, Bahamiham, I shall carry. That is the word, Bahami, Aham, I will carry. He cut that with the pen three times, three scratches on the word Bahamaham. He put it Dadamiham, I will give. I will give means I will give to someone, media, somebody, some person. So he cut that and went for begging and went to the other places of his. Uh, maybe disciples' home or somewhere, but tried much, but couldn't get anything. He was so frustrated. He said, if I go back, what shall I tell my wife? And I am nothing in my position. And I tried whole day to get something at least to go back so that we can have some little meal. By that, that time it has happened that the wife saw, after the husband gone, one small boy, in a deep black complexion, and carrying a huge load of fruits and vegetables and all the necessary things, very heavy. And he's coming, and, and he came, and he uh, just approached the room, and then seeing that, the mother said, the wife said, Oh, what is this? She, she forgot her own needs. But she said, what is this? Why are you carrying such heavy load? Who has put on your head? Well, your husband. <laughs> she said, my husband? I know him. He is a very good person, very kind and very considerate. Eh? And he has done this to you, a boy of such small, tiny, thin, tiny, eh? and eh, so much load he has put. Ah, oh, my child, ah, oh, I, I do not know how it can happen. Then he put the load uh, on the baranda, and motherly heart, mother said, my child, please sit down. You are so tired, eh? uh, let me, and he, when he saw, he saw that there are scratches. Three scratches. He said, what is this? Well, your husband, he did that. He did that? He's so cruel. I can't believe it. Anyhow, you sit down. And they found that there are sweets and all also. So took out the sweets, brought, went into the room to bring a glass of water to feed him and fanny. 
But when he came back with water, glass of water, and the sweets, and a pan, Oma, the boy is gone. Then he went and searched here and there. No, 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 no such person, but a whole load of um, fruits and uh, whatever necessities are there, all came. And then now the husband is coming with grey face and saying that, uh, when I say I could not get anything, what will happen? And then he came and said, and the wife got so mad, he said, you, what you do? What you did? Well, what? Well, you send all these things? The boy, small boy, and black complexion, and it's not only that you beat him or did something, his back is scratched, three scratch mark. And, and you did that to him? Then he was struck with wonder. He said, oh, you are fortunate, much fortunate than me. You saw Lord Krishna. He came here. He carried his, all these materials himself. Because I said, how come it will be he will carry himself? He will send it to somebody. It is not sending to somebody. He himself carried it to prove that. And he was in tears and say, see, that, that was the style of the, why I tell this story? It is a very interesting story. But the point is that these Brahmins who live in such high spirituality, see, they have no greed. They don't go to steal someone. They are not going to cheat someone. Because they are not eating for two, three days, but they are not going to steal someone or not making a slogan. This government is to be uprooted. This is, this is the political memorandum. We'll have to fight with that. He has no other agenda. What a spiritual level, household life people can have it. It gives a glimpse. So the spirituality should be like that. It will be profound in our development and a transformation of the character and joy and more joy and more joy. That's why Ramakrishna says, beyond sandal forest, there will be mines of silver and gold and then precious gems. Therefore, go forward. Then he says, but how can I ask people to go forward? If worldly people go too far, then, then, then the bottom will drop out of their world. One day, Kesha of Sen was conducting a religious service. He said, Oh God, may we all sink and disappear in the river of Bhakti. When the worship was over, I, means Ramakrishna, said to him, I said to him, Look here, how can you disappear altogether in the river of Bhakti? If you do, what will happen to those seated behind the screen? In those days, women used to not visible. They should be just not visible in the eyes. Society was so orthodox. So they are sitting, the women folks are sitting in another room. We cannot see them, but they can see the Ramakrishna speaking and talking. So what will happen to them if you dive yourself into the bhakti? That was Sri Ramakrishna telling. But do one thing. Therefore, advice for the bhaktas, do one thing. Sink now and then come out again <laughs> in, in the dry land. No? So don't think that you'll be able to totally ab get absorbed. But anyhow, the point is that those who are this is giving the concern, it has its implication. Sri Ramakrishna is so considered that you are, you are spiritual and you are married and your wife, you don't take care of the wife. What is that? You will have to take care. Ah, yeah, I am Somadhi. You are Somadhi, you have responsibility. Do that also. Say occasionally, dive deep and then come up. <laughs> that, that is Sri Ramakrishna said. How, how to live in the world also. No? Parallelly see how fine advice in, in, in instructions are there. The Vaishnava from Katwa was arguing. That means one Pandit came from Katwa, the place. Katwa is what? Katwa is Navadip, near Navadip, Sri Chaitanya's birthplace, near. Master to Vaishnava. Vaishnava means the 
you know, Vaishnava devotees, our Hare Krishna devotees are called Vaishnava devotees. Those who are lovers of Krishna, they are called Vaishnava or Vishnu. They are lovers of Vishnu. To the Vaishnava, stop that sizzling noise. Bakar, 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 bakar. And all his argument, counter argument, this philosophy versus that philosophy. Huh? Stop that noise. Huh? Stop that sizzling noise. When the butter containing, containing water is heated over a fire, it makes that sound. No? Normally it happens, no? When there is little water, then the butter makes a sizzling noise. If a man but once tastes the joy of God, his desire to argue takes wings. Who falls in love with God, he is not interested in arguing whether God is there, what is God, how can it be God. You know, devotees don't question all these things. Devotees take it for granted, God is there. Eh? I know. And I pray to him. Most of the ordinary spiritual people, village people, you go, they have their instant faith. God is there, they are praying to God. They don't know your philosophy. Maya, Brahman, Atman, eh? or your um, argument with the Buddhist idea of uh, nihilism or a fool. All these ideas, they don't care about. They know God is there, they pray to God. And the earlier lifestyle of India was so great. What a great country. In the day starts with prayer. Day ends with prayer. People go, have simple life, but they are so happy, happy people. We are all mentally deranged people. Uh, so much problem, mental world. But they, they have no mental problem at all. They, will, they are very simple people. They get, get up in the morning, sunrise, before the sun rises, they, they will raise their children. Hey, my child, get up, get up, take the name of the Lord. Huh? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. It is not that. They start, even the baby. Mom is, dad, dad is singing in the, in the bed in the early morning. Chant the name of the Lord. You are sleeping. The, the birds are already chirping. Get out, get out, get out. Huh? And the morning start with the prayer of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Na? See, and then after that, they get something to breakfast, go for their work. Noon time, they come back, eh? have some meal and nap. That time, they also do little japa or mantra. Huh? And then after that, after nap, go for another work. And the sunset, come back. And then before sunrise, sunsets, eat your meal. Huh? And then they are not great meditator. They used to have tulasi, um, uh, what is called, grove. Huh? In every home there will be some tulasi grove. People will sit around and start chanting. Maybe 10, 20 people, villagers, or the neighboring people all join together. Huh? You know what? And a child is seeing that that is the tradition of the family and, and the locality, all the neighboring people. Uh, and that's what atmosphere. By that one hour, singing and chanting the glory's name, glories of God, they all say bye, 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 and go and sleep. So early to bed, early to rise, and the style of life was so spiritual. The child is learning all these things. So that is the growth happens much better in spiritual level. Uh, but our hectic life, our tensed life, questions and so many things is disturbs the mind. So we don't get that opportunity. But we'll have to make the best use of it. So, so that means we have to be uh, like butter without water. So that uh, what will what will you gain by merely repeating Siddhi, Siddhi, Siddhi? Hmm? Marwana, Marwana, Marwana. Saying will do. You will have to test something. They say, what will you gain by merely repeating Siddhi? You will not be intoxicated even by gargling with a solution of Siddhi. Huh? Siddhi is something uh, you can drink and then you get intoxicated, no? Then your head will be reeling and you will feel, or, or I do not know, whatever happens. I have not experienced. I experienced one time little Siddhi. I didn't want it, 
but my friends did it. <laughs> After Durga Puja, Jagadatri Puja, we had a good celebration there. And it is offered to mother, a little bit of that. And somebody put it in my water, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and so I had some money, bad experience. <laughs> I didn't want that again. <laughs> so, that, but, but only saying, what is Siddhi like? Not talking about Siddhi, 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 God, 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 uh, Brahman, Atman, uh, Madhas, it is Bivarta, it is Apavada, it is Damu. We will not do. Eat something, drink something. So Ramakrishna said, what will you gain by merely repeating Siddhi, word? You will not be intoxicated even by gargling with a solution of Siddhi. It must go into your stomach. Not until then will you be intoxicated. One cannot comprehend what I am saying. What I am Miss Ramakrishna saying, unless one prays to God in solitude, all by oneself with a longing heart. Very important point. Why we are reading this again and again, it does not sink in us. Why we remain the same old guy? That because we are to do sadhana. Yes, that's why one cannot comprehend what I am saying. Ramakrishna says, unless one prays to God in solitude, in the humdrum life, busy, busy, uh, busy schedule of life, distracted in thousand directions, we cannot do that. That's why Ramakrishna was so much uh, suggestive of going to solitude. Solitude does not mean that you have to go to a thousand miles away into some cave. We can make a corner in your room, one solitude place, not to be disturbed by outside, thinking of God and going deep into one's heart. One cannot comprehend what I am saying unless one prays to God and they are going in solitude, you have to pray to God. And all by oneself. We, we always think a community life. Community life, may, community singing is good, but that is the to get some inspiration, energy. But we have to work alone in our own solitude. You and God, there is nobody else. So that should be uh, the practice. And with a longing heart, with a, with a love heart, with a longing for God. Dr. Rakhal arrived to examine Sri Ramakrishna, the master said to him eagerly, come in and sit down. The conversation with the Vaishnava continued. Uh, the doctor has come to see, but he sees his importance is to talk to the Vaishnava devotee. Hare, doctor will take fees, he has come to check you. You do the first checking. See, for spiritual people, body is secondary. Uh, spirituality is the first. So, see, now, these are all minor things which you can, while we read, we can just run over it and don't get anything. We may read ten pages, it does not mean nothing. But it is every step you can see. He is saying, why I am saying so much, it is not affected. Why are you not getting inspired by that? Because our mind should be purified, sitting in silence and in one corner and earnestly craving and praying to God to help me. So that will give the intense yearning, will give this feeling to understand the message of the Upanishad, message of the Bhagavad Gita. Man should possess dignity and alertness. Only he whose spiritual consciousness is awakened possesses this dignity and alertness and can be called a man. Futile is the human birth without the awakening of the spiritual consciousness. So he is saying, it is all life is meaningless if you have not consciousness is awakened or God consciousness is not awakened. There are many, many men at Kamar Pukur with big bellies and imposing moustache. Yet the villagers go with palanquins and bring righteous and truthful person from 20 miles away to arbitrate their quarrels. They do not bring mere pundits. Eh? So he is saying the people may be in the world very much high position, eh? body richness in their dignity in the physical, but they are not 
even their own problem they cannot solve. So an arbitrator is needed for their lawsuit. My land, your land, my house, this, this. So he has encroached my land. In the village, always, uh, they, they, they fight with petty things. Village people, uh, his land is up to this, this man. He will move that, that marred partition to two inches this side, and he will fight. Hey, you did it, and he'll go to the court case. So, truthfulness is the toughest of the Kali Yug. Truthfulness sub and submission to God and looking on the wives of other men as one's own mother. These are the three means to realization of God. Very simple but difficult proposition. And truthfulness is the toughest austerity of this age. Uh, if I say something, I should adhere to that even at a whatever cost. And this material, this earthly truthfulness leads us to the eternal truthfulness. And truthfulness, that's why three things are suggesting, suggested by a traditional proverb. Truthfulness is one, submission to God, surrender to God is second, and looking on the wives of other men as one's own mother. These are the means to God's realization. Like a child, Sri Ramakrishna said to the physician, Sir, please cure my disease. See, he's talking this moment. Ah, no one listens to me because they are impure. Next moment, like a child. Oh, doctor, and do you uh, ask me to cure you? Then doctor says, Master says, the physician is Narayana himself. Eh? That means you have your faith in doctor. That's why in our tradition, those are spiritual people, all the sadhus, but they believe in it, their, any problem comes, go to doctor. Right? No, 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 God will take care. No, 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 no. God will take care in the form of Narayana. Yeah? <laughs> Many people make a spirituality like that. I mean, chronic stomach ache or going on some disease, God will cure me. You have so much faith, God will cure me. Ramakrishna said, he said, oh, please cure me <laughs> to the doctor. And, but doctor is who? Doctor, he sees that doctor has come. Narayana has come. The God has come before me in the form of a doctor. I honor everybody. You may say that if I look on all as Narayana, then I should keep quiet. But I also accept the words of the Mahut Narayana. That story, Mahut Narayana, you know, the elephant, mad elephant going, uh, and the, the, uh, who is the driver of the, uh, what do you call him? Mahut. Mahut. Uh, he is saying, hey, mad elephant, get out of your road. But one uh, good devotee, he has heard, God is in everyone. So he started analyzing, oh, so God is in everyone. So God will be in the, in the elephant also. So why the elephant will pull me and then throw away? So he stood out and said, Oh, Mahut, Lord, Lord. Huh? And the Mahut, the, the, the elephant, elephant came, mad elephant. He took him and threw away. And he broke his arms and then said, Then when he was taken back to the doctors at home, they said, Why did you not go? You were being alerted by the Mahut. Then he said, No, I have heard that God is in everyone. So God is in on the elephant. Then he responded, God is in the elephant, but God is also in the mouth. Why did you not see the mouth's word? So uh, we sometimes make a mistake like that. Anyhow, so we, are, we can end here. Hmm? The physician, Narayana, their doctor saying, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Panamastu. So, you have any questions? You have any question? What are you reading? Huh? What are you I am reading the Gospel of Ramakrishna. Huh? Yeah, you can get it in the bookstore. Eh? What did you say? You want to get one? Yeah, you can get in the bookstore. Yeah. Online PDF also. You can get it in PDF form. 
Internet, yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, what is the question? I didn't get much. What is the difference between spirituality and being religious? Religious and? Spirituality. Spirituality. Ah, now there is a word very popular. I am spiritual and not religious. It's a very common term. It means that the young people or who are saying they are not following the so-called religion. What religion means? Religion means you follow this dictum. You, you take a bath this way, you prostrate this way, you fast this way. These are all religion, no? But whether it is spiritually you are getting illumined, that aspect is not been clear. And young people or people of most of the sensible people, they see that religion, the main purpose is God-realization, they don't have it. They say, I am following this path, say I am following the path of Hinduism, and the orthodox Hindus will say, that is the only path. Of course they don't do much, but still they say, and the Muslims will say, this is the only path. Christians will say, this is the only path. And this, if that is the only path, what is the only path? You start with the rituals and doctrines and dogmas. And that's why that Swamiji's definition is very important. Uh, it is re religion is realization. Uh, doctrines and dogmas, rituals and forms, temples or churches. Yeah? These are all necessary, but these are secondary. We make this secondary as primary, and primary is forgotten. That's why intelligent people, they will say, I don't want this ritual where there's so much conflict, so much killing in the name of religion. Swami Vivekananda said, as much religion has brought peace, it has destroyed the peace of the world more than that. Human slaughtering, human killing, the number of people who are killed and destroyed in the name of religion exceeds other, other war, 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 war deaths. So that's why people say, I don't want to be religious. I want to internalize, develop myself. That is the spiritual. I, I think that should be the inner inspiration. Is it not? What do you think? Yes. Uh, so, can you speak a little bit about why uh, the name of the Lord, Mantra, Champion, is uh, the most uh, recommended sadhana in the country? So name, name of God, repetition of the name of God. Yeah. Name, repetition of the name of, is very purifying. Why? You know, if you, if you repeat the name, say, a dragon. <laughs> See, close your eyes and you say dragon, 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 dragon. What will come? The, 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 the very frightening teeth and this and that of the dragon, no? So you see, the word has some power to generate similar type of faith, similar type of thought in us, and it evokes in us, no? If you say, dog, 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 you see? My mind is getting an idea of a dog, four-legged animal, his ears, eyes, nose, now whatever. So, you see, it is all here in me. What I am pulling out in, our, in my consciousness is that the word, what I repeating. So when you repeat the holy name, say Rama, or say Christ, see? Immediately you see the beautiful face, serene face, compassionate, loving. So you, you are, this name is helping to bring that image of the divine. And as much we repeat again and again, this becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. 
As a result, this God experience of the chosen ideal, I'm thinking of Christ, I'm thinking of Ramakrishna. It is vague for me. I don't visualize, I can't visualize, though I try much. Huh? But with this reputation, because it is connected with the name and form and also the divine aspect, so that thought repeatedly comes in the mind and creates a sensation and creates a solid form. By long practice, this will be like a living presence. Just now it is, I am saying Ramakrishna, but it is just maybe nothing or maybe some little bit of this. This is the beginning. That's why if it is really sincerely done, what will happen? That thought will be so intense and this concretized appearance of the divine we call God vision. And that is the God vision in the saguna form. But if you continue the mantra the same way, it will appear further details, radiant, full of light. It will be much deeper and deeper as you go. It will spread everywhere and you will see that you are lost into that. So this mantra has the power to evoke and invoke in us that spiritual energy, spiritual thought, concretized as it were. That's why mantra, japa, is emphasized so much. Even Holy Mother said, you don't understand the meaning even. Just do that. Uh, if you do it meaning, then you get better result. But even if you cannot, but do, and you get the best result of transformation. See, when the mind becomes pure thought, impure thought does not come. It's a very simple thing. Two things cannot stay together. If the demon and the god, they are fighting, when the demons will win, the gods are out. That's why Chandi. Chandi, you chant the Chandi mantras, the gods were in the heaven. The demons took possession of every position. Get out, get out, and kill them, and they out of life, they ran away. No? It happens everywhere. So, when the demons, the demonic thought, character, thinking, they will be driven away by this input of this holy mantra. And mantra shakti. There is shakti in every word. In our ordinary uses, no? There are gang people have create every day some new word, a new vocabulary maybe. And they carry meaning after some days. They can use that and they can understand its deep significance, no? Suppose we know many common language. Say some, you rascal. A rascal, if I hear someone is telling me rascal, someone is telling me fool, what will be my reaction? It is alphabet. Combination and permutation of alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, R, A, S, C. It's like that. So why I am getting angry? Because it has bad, bad association for a long time. And that power has been generated into the word itself. That's why good words, noble words, the words which have given the vision of God, that's why Om and other things are so powerful because it has been revealed to the hearts of the sages as also repeated billion, billion, trillion times every day even. So that has become more strong and powerful. Hmm? And you are asking anything? Uh, uh, mythology, uh, philosophy, and ritual. Uh, yeah. Mythology, ritual, mythology, and spirituality. And the, every religion has three aspects. One is the mythology aspect, another is the ritual aspect. To so start with the ritual aspect, mythology aspect is there. There are gods, goddesses, this story, that story. They are not visible, uh, but they have some reality there. Huh? So, uh, uh, and uh, spirituality is the, uh, the essential part of it. But people start with ritual. People start with other things. How to practice lifelong humility, a question. 
If one becomes a scientist or a professor, the surrounding environment always tries to influence him to think of himself as someone intellectual. How not to fall into the trap and not let the pride of his material education and achievement mark him blind? Uh, your question solves the, gives the response that we should be aware this achievement is, in the worldly sense, it's achievement. It is also God's grace. Take it as God's grace. So we will be humble. If you have that quality at the same time, this, you should be humble that, yes, God has given me. So that can be spiritual also. But on the opposite way, if you forget God and you think that it is me doing and my achievement, my glory, and I will have to compete, I will have to fight, then that will create the worldly view of its, uh, its ideas. So humility need not have to be, I, I would suggest take the advice of Sri Ramakrishna. Outside you say, yes, I have these qualifications. Uh, I am much better candidate for this higher position. Put your research papers and all these documents there and fight for it. It is outside. But internally you know, well, Lord, I don't care for anything, but I have to survive in the world. So to serve you, I am doing like that. No? So it is the internal attitude. So two types of attitudes should be kept. Otherwise, if you become too humble, you will not get raised or you will not have any promotion and everyone will, uh, it's nothing. Uh, that, uh, but in the world, you need to have some ego. That's a good ego. Uh, yes, I am proud that I have worked hard to get this uh, thesis submitted, and I got it. Okay. I'm not an ordinary guy. Okay. <laughs> but mentally you think, I am nothing, oh Lord. It is by your grace it has happened. I am nothing, I am nothing. So. I was born lazy. <laughs> How to get over all over it? Or should I take it as God's plan? <laughs> so should I take as God's plan that I'm lazy? <laughs> no, God God's plan is not my plan. <laughs> no, we are we take it very uh, seriously. Uh, yes, uh, if I can manage without working and spending the day lying down, sleeping, watching movie, uh, going for some fun, and day goes on away. It's a wastage of the day. If we understand that we are all composed of the three gunas, Satya, Rajas, and Tamas, so Tamas quality will always, it's inertness. It brings us to laziness, sleep, morbidity, not thinking clearly, not this energy to do something. Huh? So those who are psychologically gets affected, the first symptom comes. They want to go away and sleep, not to see faces of others and hiding. Huh? That means you are separating yourself and that's going to tamasa nature. No. Rajasa, to go, get in activity, do something, Positive. So that positive energy will be generated in us. And then with that positive energy, then you can step one more. I'm doing for God. I'm serving God. Uh, some, I, I'm charitable. My time is enough. I can go and give some service to some old person or some person who is needed or do something constructive and positive. So, we have to transcend. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita's suggestion, a tama, if the tama quality is to, to, to be overcome by rajas, and rajas quality is to be overcome by sattva. It happens every day. Uh, all of you may be experiencing the same. When in the morning, those who are meditators, they have to get up in the morning, no? Otherwise, you can sleep up to 9 o'clock. That's okay, because you, have to, you can start your work afterwards. But those who are spiritual people, they find that there is the only time in the morning, which is your time. 
Otherwise, when as the day grows, so much things come around. So they get up early morning. So you had that's called rajas. Tamas body was jump. We don't want to jump out. We toss this side once and toss. Though I plan that I will be getting up at this particular time, three thirty, four o'clock, four thirty, whatever. But a yeah, little, a few minutes, and you see one hour is gone. Anyhow, so that's why I say jump out of your bed and just go in the shower. So tamas to rajas. When you get a good shower, <laughs> your all tamas qualities are mostly you cannot. Still think afterwards, I'll go and sleep after taking a shower, immediately because you have taken the shower. And then we do, we sit for meditation, the sat sattva. So if we can take this formula in our life, yes, I am sometimes tamasic, but I am also the rajasic, and I also have the sattvic quality. So we'll have to make an effort to go from the one quality to the other. Another question, how can we maintain our humility even when we become angry or something? I think of God. What can we do? Huh? I am angry for some reason. We justify. I'm, I have a reason for being angry. That's true also maybe. But is that giving you freedom? Is that making you the cheerful person? No. So better not to indulge into that thing. Uh, so we maintain our humility. Humility is, we only think humility is like becoming a meaningless person. No, humility means some dignity. Uh, humility is misunderstood in devotional language. And humble means you are humble. Yes, I am humble. But I am also strong in God consciousness. And I have some inner dignity. Inner dignity. Uh, outer dignity will also manifest to a devotee in a different way. So humility don't mean that oh, you, to become like a doormat is called humility. Humility is not becoming a doormat. Humility is a power. Humble to become humble. I have enough knowledge, but I am humbled. So that is something different. Okay? So thank you all. It is almost 10 minutes to 9. So we end here. And uh, tomorrow at 7.30 here, Sami Chit Brahmananda will be giving Vedic Christianity. So thank you all for joining. And Mother bless us all. Thank you.